How to Prepare for Breast Surgery. Outline. What tests do I need? What medications, pills, should I stop? When should I stop eating and drinking? Other important tips. Before your surgery, you will have a pre-admission appointment. This will likely be done over the phone. You may also be required to have some pre-surgery tests, such as blood work, an ECG, which is a test for your heart, a chest x-ray, or you may need other medical tests before surgery. Your surgeon's office will let you know what's required. Medications and supplements. Five days before and five days after your surgery, don't take aspirin and prescribed blood thinners, fish oil, omega supplements, pills, garlic supplements, vitamin E supplements, herbal remedies, and other supplements. The first group, aspirin, prescribed blood thinners, fish oil, omega, garlic, and vitamin E supplements, are all stopped for the same reason. They can cause excess bleeding during the surgery. Herbal remedies and other supplements are stopped for a different reason. We're not sure how they may interact with other medications or anesthesia, so just to be safe, we recommend stopping these five days before and five days after surgery. Two days before and two days after your surgery, don't take anti-inflammatories like Advil, Motrin, or Ibuprofen. They also can act as blood thinners, causing increased bleeding during the surgery or after. You can take Tylenol, acetaminophen, until midnight the night before your surgery. It's a different type of medication, so it's safe to do this. The night before surgery, do not eat anything after midnight. The day of surgery, you can drink clear fluids until five hours before your surgery. Clear fluids include water, tea or coffee with no milk or sugar added, apple juice, and clear broth. If you take medications in the morning, discuss this with your team. Don't forget, leave valuables like jewelry at home since they can be stolen. No makeup, no nail polish since you will have sensors on your fingers and nail polish can obstruct the reading. No contacts, Glasses are fine. Have someone to drive you home because you will be groggy from the surgery and it isn't safe to drive. Know about your lumpectomy and lymph node surgery. Outline. What happens during a lumpectomy? What happens during a sentinel lymph node biopsy? What happens during a lymph node dissection? What happens after surgery? How do I care for my incision or incisions? What should I watch out for? What bras should I wear? There are two different types of lumpectomies, those with localization and without. We use localization when the area in the breast is either hard to feel or we cannot feel it at all. With a lumpectomy without localization, the surgeon will simply feel the area in your breast and then remove it with healthy tissue around the edges. For a localized lumpectomy, typically we use a molly seed to localize the area. The day before surgery, or a few days before, you'll come in for the molly insertion. This is put in in breast imaging under local freezing. Your breasts will be frozen and then the radiologist will inject the molly seed. Once this is completed, you'll have a mammogram to confirm it's in the correct location. The molly seed acts as an X marks the spot for the surgeon during the operation. When you're asleep under general anesthesia, the surgeon will then use a probe that magnetizes that seed. That magnetic pull will guide them to the area and let them know what area needs to be removed. And the seed, as well as the area in your breast, will be removed with some healthy tissue around the edges. Sentinel node biopsy. If you're having a sentinel lymph node biopsy, you will go to the Toronto General First Floor Nuclear Medicine Department for the injection of a radioactive dye. This is often done the morning of surgery, but could also be done the afternoon before. Sentinel lymph node biopsies are done when there's no sign that the cancer has spread to lymph nodes. We use different kinds of dyes to help us flag which lymph nodes are the sentinel or the gateway lymph nodes. These are the lymph nodes that drain the most fluid from the breast. The first dye is shown in the first picture. The radioactive dye is injected into the area where the tumor is. That dye will travel to the lymph nodes underneath your arm. This can happen the afternoon before the surgery or the morning of the surgery. You're not radioactive and don't need to do anything special. 
after this dye is injected. Some women do have some pain or discomfort at the injection site. The second part of this procedure happens while you're asleep on the operating room table, and it's the injection of a second blue dye. It's called this because it's blue. It's important to know this because you'll notice that you may have some blue around the skin on the mastectomy incision, and you'll pee blue-green for the first few days after surgery. Both of these dyes work together to flag the sentinel or the gateway lymph nodes. The surgeon will use a probe that senses the radioactivity, and whichever lymph nodes are the most radioactive will be removed during the operation. Everybody's body is different, so the number of lymph nodes can vary person to person. This woman had two lymph nodes removed during the surgery. Axillary node dissection. An axillary node dissection is done when we know that there's cancer that is spread to the lymph nodes. The goal is to remove the cancer that's spread there. The surgeon in the operating room will remove the lower two levels of lymph nodes from your underarm. You will still have some lymph nodes left. The number of lymph nodes can vary. Anywhere from 10 to 30 lymph nodes will be removed. Similarly to the mastectomy, a post-surgical drain will also be inserted with this surgery. Recovery room. You will stay here for 45 to 90 minutes. You will have an IV, intravenous, which is used to keep you hydrated, as well as give you any medications you may need in this area. For example, if you are having pain or nausea, they could give you medications through the IV. Your surgical site is closely monitored. The nurse will make sure that your dressings are on properly and that your drains are working. You will stay in this room until you're ready to be transferred to the short stay unit and then home. Discharge. A lumpectomy with sentinel node biopsy is a day surgery. You go home the same day as the surgery. For a lumpectomy and auxiliary node dissection, you will stay overnight. You go home the next day with home care. Bring appropriate clothes. Bring a responsible adult who can drive you home. The doctor will give you a prescription for pain medications. Typically, this is Tylenol number three Tylenol and codeine, or Percocet, Tylenol and oxycodone. An important thing to know about these medications is that they can be very constipating. It's a good idea to take a stool softener when you're taking these medications. Your surgeon may prescribe one, or you can pick one up at your pharmacy. Another tip for managing your pain at home is to be proactive or stay on top of your pain medication. If you've heard of the pain scale before, zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain ever, you want to take some medication when your pain is a 5, 6, or a 7 out of 10, not when it's a 10 out of 10. If you take medication when your pain is a 10 out of 10, taking a strong pain medicine like Percocet may only bring it down to a 6 or a 7, and then you're still quite uncomfortable. It's a good idea to take medication when your pain is at a 5 or a 6, to bring it down to a comfortable level. Follow up after surgery. You will meet the surgeon about two to three weeks after surgery. Your pathology report will be ready and discussed. Referrals to other breast cancer doctors will be sent if needed. Incisions. Lumpectomy, about a two inch incision on your breast. Sentinel node biopsy or axillary dissection, about two inches in your armpit. All are closed with dissolvable stitches. Auxiliary node dissections sometimes closed with staples. Over the dissolvable stitches will be stereo strips covered with a gauze and tape dressing. After 48 hours, you can remove the outer gauze and tape, leaving the stereo strips on for 14 days. If the stereo strips fall off before the 14 days, that's okay. We just ask that you don't remove them yourself before that mark. For patients having breast reconstruction, you'll have a clear plastic bandage over your incisions. Please leave this on until you see your plastic surgeon. When can I shower? Do not shower for the first 48 hours after surgery. You can have a sponge bath. After 48 hours, you can remove dressings and shower, but avoid soaking the incision. Use mild soap. Swelling. Swelling around your incision is normal. Usually takes three to six weeks to decrease. It's not uncommon to get a golf ball of swelling in your underarm where your lymph nodes are removed. This can take some time to go down 
and is often more uncomfortable than where your breast was removed. If swelling is large and hard, contact the nurse coordinator. Don't apply ice or heat to the area where you had surgery. Since the area may be numb and you could burn yourself without knowing. Infection. Not common, but important to watch for. Signs and symptoms of infection. Redness, heat, pus or discharge, new pain, hard swelling, rapid new swelling, fever, 38 degrees or higher for more than 24 hours. If you think you have an infection, seek medical attention. Monday to Friday, call the nurse coordinator. On the weekend, see your family doctor, a walk-in clinic, or the emergency room. What bra should I wear after surgery? Wear a supportive bra with no underwire. Wear it all the time, even to bed for a week or two. Please continue watching the video to learn more about how to care for your drains after surgery. This video is to help you know how to care for your JP drain. It does not replace medical advice or treatment. I will say you in this video, but you can refer to yourself or whoever is helping to care for your drain. This video is made for people who have drains after breast cancer surgery. This video uses a female figure to demonstrate how to take care of your drains, although breast cancer can affect people of every gender. In this video, you will learn why you need the drain, how the drain works, how to care for your drain after surgery, when the drain will be removed, how to shower with the drain, what to do if you get an infection, what to do if your drain is not working or falls out. The type of drain you will get is called a JP or Jackson Pratt drain. You will have this drain for 7 to 14 days. In this video, I will refer to the Jackson Pratt drain as the JP drain or just drain. Why you need the JP drain? After surgery, Fluid can collect around the area where you had surgery and near the incisions or surgical cuts. The fluid is called seroma fluid. If this fluid builds up, it can cause swelling around the incision. Swelling puts pressure on the incision. This causes pain and delays healing. The drain removes fluid buildup and helps prevent swelling. By draining the fluid, there is less pressure on the incision. Less pressure allows the incision to heal properly and reduces pain. The drain has the following parts. The drainage end, which is placed inside your body where the surgery occurred. This part is thick and white with lots of little holes for the fluid to drain through. You will not see the drainage end. A tube, which is attached to the drainage end and to the bulb. A soft bulb with the stopper at the end of the tube to collect fluid. The bulb holds 100 milliliters of fluid. These measurements are on the side of the bulb. A clip to attach the bulb to your clothing. How the JP drain works. The JP drain works by draining seroma fluid from the surgical site through the drainage end and tube and into the bulb. The JP drain is used for mastectomy surgeries and axillary lymph node dissection surgeries, which remove lymph nodes near your armpit. Some patients will only have a mastectomy. Some will have just lymph nodes removed. And some will have both. If you had a mastectomy, the tube will be kept in place with a stitch on the surface of your skin near the breast where the drain enters your body you will be able to see the stitch. If you had lymph nodes removed, the tube will be stitched under the arm where the surgery was done. If you had a double or bilateral mastectomy, you will have two drains. If you had a double mastectomy and lymph nodes removed, you may have three or more drains. If you had a deep flap breast reconstruction, you may also have drains in your belly on the right and left side. The drain removes fluid by suction and gravity. Squeezing the bulb and putting the stopper in 
creates a constant and gentle suction. The suction pulls fluid away from the incision through the drainage end and into the bulb. By keeping the drain below the cut or incision, gravity works to help drain fluids. This can be done by clipping the bulb to your clothing at the waist level, or by placing it inside your post-surgical camisole pouch. The fluid in your drain is made up of blood and seroma fluid. The color of the fluid in your drain will change over the course of a few days. Right after surgery, it will be a bloody red color. Then, over time, it will change to a pinkish yellow color, then to a pale yellow color, which is the seroma fluid. How to care for your JP drain after surgery. Taking care of your JP drain helps ensure that you do not have the drain for longer than you need. The longer the drain is in, the greater the risk of infection. For some people, taking care of your JP drain may seem like a hard task, but by following a few easy steps, you can manage your drain and help your body heal quickly. There are two things you need to do to take care of your JP drain. One, milk the drain, and two, empty the drain. Milking the JP drain. Milking the drain may seem like an odd expression, but milking the drain keeps the tube from getting clogged. If the tube gets clogged, then built up fluid cannot drain from the incision. There are three steps for you to take to milk the drain. Step one, clean your hands. Cleaning your hands will reduce the risk of infection. Watch this video to learn how to clean your hands well. Step two, with one hand, hold the tube where it enters your body. Keep this hand in place so you do not tug on the drain. Step three, with your other hand, pinch the tube just below the hand that is holding the tube. With your fingers pinched, slide your fingers down the tube. Sliding your fingers down the tube pushes any clots, blood, tissue, or debris down into the bulb. Repeat this step a few times, sliding your fingers down the tube a little at a time. Milk the drain every three hours during the day while you are awake. Each time you milk the drain, repeat the process of sliding your fingers down the full tube two to three times in a row. You do not have to wake up and do this at night. Emptying the JP drain. Empty the JP drain when you wake up and before you go to bed. As the bulb fills up, you may empty it as needed during the day, but make sure you record how much fluid was emptied each time. Before you empty the JP drain, make sure you have a clean area, the measuring cup your nurse gave you, a daily log or sheet to record the time and amount of fluid emptied from the drain, a pen or a pencil. Your daily log will include the date, the time, and the amount of fluid emptied from each drain. Here is an example of a daily log for a patient with a double or bilateral mastectomy. Wash your hands before you handle any parts of the drain. Then, Remove the drain from your clothing, surgical bra, or camisole if it is attached. There are eight steps for you to take to empty the drain. Step one, unplug the stopper on top of the bulb. The bulb expands as it fills with fluid. You may notice that the bulb expands further when the stopper is removed. Do not touch the inside of the stopper or the opening of the bulb to reduce the risk of infection. Step two, turn the bulb upside down over the measuring cup and gently squeeze it. The fluid from the bulb will drain into the measuring cup. Step three, once the bulb is drained of fluid, turn the bulb right side up. There may be blood clots or bits of body tissue at the bottom of the bulb. This is normal and will not harm you. Do not wash the bulb or try to rinse it with water. Washing the bulb or rinsing the bulb can lead to infection. Step four, squeeze the sides of the bulb together until your fingers feel the palm of your hand. Squeezing the bulb will restart the suction. Step five, 
continue to squeeze the bulb while you put the stopper back in the plug. Check to see that the bulb stays fully compressed to ensure that there is suction. Step 6. Place the bulb back in the pouch of your surgical bra or camisole, or clip it to your clothing. Step 7. Check the amount of fluid in the measuring cup. It is normal to have blood clots, bits of tissue, or red and yellow fluid, called the seroma fluid, in the cup. Write down the amount and time you emptied the drain in a journal or in your daily log. To get drainage log pages you can print out, click the link below. If you have more than one drain, record the amount of fluid emptied from each drain. Do not add the amounts from different drains together. Step 8. Flush the fluid from the measuring cup down the toilet and rinse the measuring cup with water. When your drapey drain will be removed. Keeping a log of the amount of fluid you drain lets your healthcare team know when to remove the JP drain. The amount of fluid you have in your drain would become less and less as your incision heals. When the total amount of fluid that comes out of one drain is less than 30 milliliters in 24 hours for two days in a row, the drain is ready to come out. When your surgery is finished, your surgeon will place an electronic order to the Toronto Central Lynn. The Toronto Central Lynn will then arrange for community care nursing. You will get a call from the community care nursing team once you have left the hospital and gone home. The nursing team will let you know if you need to go to a community health clinic near your home or if a nurse will come to your home. You will have a total of two to four visits with the nurse. You may need more visits with the nurse if the JP drain must stay in for a longer amount of time. The nurse will check the drain and the drain's insertion site. The drain's insertion site is where the drain enters your skin. The nurse will also check your level of pain and review your daily log of JP drain output. When the drain is ready to come out, the nurse will first remove the stitch holding the drain in place. The nurse will then remove the drain, including the drainage end. Having the drain removed is not painful. The nurse will put a dressing of gauze and tape on your JP drain insertion site while it continues to heal. Change your dressing once per day or if the dressing is soaked through. The dressing only needs to be on until there is no more fluid seeping out of the insertion site of the drain. To change the dressing, first wash your hands. Remove the old dressing, then apply a fresh gauze pad to the insertion site with tape. Showering with the JP drain. You may shower with the drain in place 48 hours after surgery. Do not shower before then. Showering before 48 hours can increase the risk of infection. You may have a sponge bath during this time, but do not get the insertion site wet. Before you shower, tape the bulb to your skin at the hip or use a Velcro belt to attach the bulb so that it does not dangle and risk falling out. Use medical tape, which you can buy at your local drugstore. You do not need to cover the JP drain insertion site when you shower because the stitches close off the area. If you feel more comfortable having a dressing over the JP drain insertion site while you shower, you may apply a plastic dressing with tape. Remove the dressing after you have showered. Use mild soap with no scents. Soaps with scents can cause irritation, allergic reactions, and increase the risk of infection. Examples of mild soaps are Aveeno, Dove, Cetaphil, or Ivory Soap. Do not soak the insertion site of the drain. Rinse and pat the area dry after you are done showering. What to do if you get an infection? Signs of infection include redness, heat, pus or discharge, new pain, heart swelling or rapid new swelling, or a fever of 38 degrees or higher for more than 24 hours. If you think you have an infection, get medical help. On a weekday, Monday to Friday, call your nurse coordinator at Princess Margaret. On weekends or after hours, 
go to your family doctor, walk-in clinic, or emergency room. What to do if your drain is not working or falls out? If you notice that the drain is not flowing, try the following. Check the bulb and make sure that it is compressed. The bulb must be compressed in order to create suction. Refer to steps 4 and 5 of how to empty the drain. Check the stopper. The stopper must be fully in the plug and securely closed. If it is not securely closed, air can get into the bulb and the bulb will not create suction. Check the drainage tube. Sometimes the tube can get clogged due to blood clots, old tissue, and built up debris from seroma fluid. Try milking the tube to release any blockages. Refer to the steps under milking the JP drain to milk the tube. If the drain is still not working, then contact the community care access nurse, your nurse surgical coordinator, or surgeon's office. There may be another cause, such as an air leak at the insertion site. If it is an air leak at the insertion site, it may need to be completely sealed with the dressing. Rarely is a new drain required. The drain, along with the drainage end, can slip out of place or fall out at the insertion site if it is pulled or gets caught. This rarely happens. If your drain slips or falls out, contact your surgeon's office. A new drain may or may not be required depending on when the drain came out of place. You have come to the end of the JP drain video. Refer back to it as often as you need. If you have any questions, please contact your surgeon's office.